Getting into it, welcome to the biggest LEGO YouTuber panel ever. And we will introduce each of our panelists. The B3, first off. I'm the B3. I make city building videos, but I'm telling a story, building a house for each of the collectible minifigure series. Danny Bob Studios. Let's go. I'm Danny Bob Studios. I make entertaining story Lego videos. I made the generations of different Lego characters. We have Tiago Caterino. Let's go. My channel name is Tiago Caterino, my own name. I make Lego set reviews. Just start, new YouTubers feel the need to get like the right equipment to get started on YouTube, but you don't need that. Most of us have like cell phones, a personal laptop, that's enough to get started, and then you can get the material. And then we have our last, but definitely not least, Duck Bricks. I'm Duck Bricks, aka Chris. I do a lot of LEGO lore retrospectives, I do reviews, I do news, but really what I exci I'm excited about are original LEGO themes and doing videos on that and history. So, first off, before we get started all, happy Father's Day for all of the amazing fathers in the room. Absolutely. You guys spend a lot of time and coming to a LEGO convention might not always be the most ideal thing, most relaxing thing, but we appreciate you. What you do is very important. All right. So, getting into it. Welcome to the biggest LEGO YouTuber panel ever. <laughs> um, for those who don't know, I'm Republic Studs. Um, quick. Quick. Go. So, I, I run... Again. <laughs> uh, so I run a Lego channel, obviously, uh, so subscribe, no, uh, <laughs> uh, but we're going to have a great show tonight. I've been in the Lego community now since I was nine years old, so that's like 10, yeah, I, mean, I just, I'm just graduated high school, so that's cool. So either way, we're going to introduce people. We have a nice panel, you saw on poster, and we have a lot of other YouTubers in the room. Uh, and you'll have a chance to maybe meet some of them by the end of tonight. We're recording, so this is going to be up on YouTube at some point. Uh, I'd like to thank the, a couple of Brickheads guys. Sean, where are you? Uh, thank you so much. He's been helping. It means the world, really. Okay, there we go. All right, so you can click, and we will introduce each of our panelists. And I'd like you all to give them like the biggest clapping. So this is, that was a word. So <laughs> this is the B3, first off. Let's go. All right, Josh, welcome, yeah. Um, yes, so famous for his storytelling. Uh, he is really, I, I believe, the best storyteller in the Lego community, bar none. He's amazing, he has some of the great videos. You've almost certainly seen one of them at some point in time. Great guy. All right, so we, who do we have next? Let's see. All right, we have Danny Bob Studio. Let's go. All right. Danny is fantastic. She runs just some great videos. She does so much stuff. Uh, my personal favorite is like the, the history one where she did like the whole family. Like, like generations. Generations, yeah, there. Yeah. You know, uh, she, fantastic. That is our second panelist. Next up, we have Tiago Caterino. Let's go. All right. So, official Lego designer. So, awesome. Turn, Official, once a Lego designer, always a Lego designer, probably. I don't know. Um, <laughs> turned Lego YouTuber. So I think it's awesome. One of the best reviewers around. And then we have our last, but definitely not least, <laughs> Duck Bricks. <laughs> Lego master, host, uh, uh, winner of. Uh, one of the coolest things ever, uh, Lego Masters, yeah. and also has, I believe, the, the every single Lego set, like, ever. Hold up, there's a dude with a Bionicle costume. Oh. oh. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, get them up here. Right on, Andy, you have some questions, so we're going to try to get to some of those over here. Uh, and we are going to get started. All right, oh, and also, we have a lot of YouTubers right here and actually in the whole room, and that's great. Uh, these are the ones that told me they were maybe going to be at Virginia, so if you're not on here, I'm sorry. All right. Chicago. All right. Yeah. Chicago. Virginia, Chicago. What am I? Doing? So we're going to get started on the panel discussion. How long have you been doing LEGO YouTube? And if you could start again, how would you do it? So we're going to start with my friend Josh from the B3, and I'll hand it over to you. 
Yeah, so I've been u doing YouTube for seven years, and LEGO was part of that for some of it, the time. Uh, and the start, I was just kind of doing whatever, just making videos for fun, which was great. But I guess if my advice, if you're trying to grow, is stick to one thing. So as soon as I stuck to LEGO, it started to grow and grow and grow. So that would be my advice. I'm Danny Bob Studios. I've been doing LEGO YouTube for almost three years now. Started out making reviews, and I think that's a great place to start to get you comfortable in front of the camera, talking about what you love. And then I started making more entertainment storytelling, which is really where I found my passion for the current content that I make. I'm Thiago. Uh, I started YouTube at around five years ago. I, I, I've done a lot of different stuff. I started with tutorials, went really heavy on those, and then eventually I did lots of educational type videos, illegal building techniques. Don't do those. Uh, and then eventually I moved on to, to LEGO Set Reviews. I really enjoyed making those. And yeah, for people starting, just start. Sometimes people will be waiting for the right piece of gear to get started, but everyone has like a personal phone and a personal laptop. Start with that and yeah, your way up. Hey, I'm Chris, aka yeah. Tough Bricks. <laughs> I've been doing Lego YouTube since probably around early 2021, late 2020, so fairly new ish to the game, but it's been a crazy journey ever since. And for me personally, I guess uh, I don't think I changed the thing. It's been a really incredible journey, but what I would say is that. Never make videos just for the sake of doing it or for trying to hit an algorithm or clicks. Just do videos that you want to see, do videos for fun, and do what makes you happy, and that's where you're going to find the passion and energy, and uh, that's what I would say. I'll also say, our Lego branding and quality guidelines, I think that should be all capitalized. <laughs> I wouldn't do it any other way. I started when I was like 14 and I couldn't have started any earlier and I was so happy. It was so natural and it was just nice getting, you get a community over time. Um, you just got to keep doing it. That's all I'd say. Don't give up. All your videos will not get views. They will be terrible. And, but you learn and it gets a lot better. I would echo that. Yeah, just keep going. Um, go through the terrible phase. I look back at some of my old videos and just cringe and that's <laughs> part of the process. Um, I'll echo what I said. I'll say again that uh, stick to one thing, try to focus on it, improve eat one thing each video, and before you know it, uh, that your videos will be unrecognizable. If I were to start over, I think I would have started just creating short videos. It's a <laughs> lot less uh, of a scary thing to get into, just making a one minute or less video compared to an eight minute video, trying to keep the retention of everybody watching it for the full time. So you could try there, starting just with short videos. It's easier to get into, and then you learn lots of editing skills along the way, and you can start making long-form content. For me, I would say, like, try to surround yourself with like-minded people that are in the same boat, because uh, the learning curve on YouTube is, is very big. There's lots of different skills that you need to learn to be able to do a video on YouTube. So if you surround yourself with other YouTubers that are in the same boat, it might be easier because they'll tell you some tips and things that they have gone through yeah. that you haven't gone through already. So that will probably kickstart your YouTube journey. So, yeah. I feel like in the wise words of Master Yoda, the greatest teacher of failure in it. So well, I definitely do think I've made a lot of mistakes. I think everything that I've done has been a learning experience and I just, I don't think I would change anything because even for things that I think I could have done better or something I should have changed, it's always a way to improve, and that's just what it's going to be like if you're doing something like a YouTube channel. You're not going to be perfect off the bat, but you can learn from your mistakes. I mean, if there was one thing I would change, there's probably a video that had like a Braille brick set in. I probably shouldn't have put that out. <laughs> <laughs> you want to add some context there? No. no. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Great. All right. So, on to the next one. So, I found this to be an interesting question, and it's not thought about a lot, and it's how do you find your niche? Now, Everyone is, there's some people in this audience. I will shout out, I don't know, has anyone in this room heard of the Jumi film? No? Oh, shoot, okay, cool. We got, some, we got some hands, good. All right, so he has one of the most interesting niches in the community, and he may be in this room, but you know, we're not gonna talk about that. Uh, he, has a fa he hasn't shown his face, so that's cool. But <laughs> either way, everyone has a really interesting thing, and I think one of the most interesting people is the B3 over here. He does the mo some of the most unique, everyone really does a 
own spin on it. You do some of the most unique stuff, so how do you go about choosing stuff like that? I would say that Lego is a giant, giant umbrella, and so many sub-niches fall under that. So just it takes a little <laughs> bit of experimenting to find where you fit. So I love telling stories from like four years old, and I knew I wanted to do something like that with Lego, and then it just came down to the format of the video, what I was going to do in the video to kind of be the backdrop of that story, and a lot of just trial and error to find what hit and what didn't. By the way, if you guys haven't watched the B3, make sure to go subscribe right now. I can confidently say I have taken tips from his storytelling abilities, and the way that he visually storytells is amazing. So sometimes you have to find inspiration from other people too to find your niche. And I think that's an important thing to do is get a good sense for what's out there and what you like. Because a lot of times what I watch is what I like and then you can get inspiration for how you want to make and tell your story. But at heart, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so that's where I always tend to kind of come back to. Even if I'm telling a story about Lego Bob, it's probably going to be about how Lego Bob has a Star Wars Captain Rex in his living room, because Bob's going to like Star Wars too, because that's my story. But anyways, finding your niche, I think, can uh, happen just over time. So don't be too stressed about trying to find it right away. Yeah, I don't think I can add too much to it, like experiment with different kinds of uh, videos and different themes and stuff. So, and eventually you'll find something that you feel comfortable about and uh, just pursue that one. And then that doesn't mean that you can't, that you need to stick to that one for your entire YouTube career, you know, you could. Uh, change things up uh, eventually. I did that and it still did okay. I'm still doing okay. So yeah, don't be afraid to experiment. I think when it comes to finding your niche, maybe the question that I always ask myself is, why do I like Lego? Why do I want to do this? What kinds of things would I watch? And that usually is reflected with the kinds of videos that you put out. And there's the Lego community is so vast in that no matter what you're interested in, there's gonna be at least somebody else out there who is as passionate, if not more, about whatever it is that you are. I mean, you might think you're the only Lego Galloway fan, but trust me, there are many of us out there. <laughs> so I definitely would say this, try to do just what makes you happy, what makes you passionate. Also, kind of going back to the other points, getting inspiration from everyone else in the community is really, really great. I mean, I have to shout out to you, Studio. I always say at the top of this day, who are you in the Sorry, Tiago, you're number two in my heart. It's very okay. You know, inspiration from whoever is at the top of their game out there doing stuff that you love watching, I'd say that just gives me energy because it makes me want to put out videos even half as good as I. So, there are a lot of people in here, I bet, have YouTube accounts. They've posted videos, but how do you grow it? Um, go into it. That's a really good question. I mean, one of the things that I found, and not even necessarily intentionally, but it's been a really fun part of growing the channel, is that there are other forms of social media, other forms of communities that you can build that aren't just YouTube subscribers or YouTube commenters. Like I made a Discord server for DuckBricks a couple of years back, and that has so many daily active users. It's crazy just going into your community and getting a chance to chat with people about videos, about Lego stuff. and. I feel like there's so many different avenues. Like you could be a Twitch streamer, you could be on Instagram or TikTok, but there's many ways to grow your community beyond just a channel and beyond just one thing. And I would say the more platforms that you're on, the more chances there are for people to find you. So don't be afraid to branch out. Yeah. Um, there's a couple acts that you can do to, to like try and grow your channel. Like you can do trend acting, like if there's like a very trending thing going on, maybe try to do a video related to that. Let's say like the new Spider-Man movies coming out. So maybe make a Spider-Man uh, Lego mock and make a video about it, for instance. So that's one way to do it. Uh, something that worked for me was that I, I was browsing a lot on YouTube back then when I was starting. And then I saw a video uh, of another channel that was doing really well. And I looked at that video and I thought, I think I can do this slightly better, slightly longer. And that really worked for me because I did a couple of those. Those videos started to be featured on the suggestion tab of that video that was doing really well. And surely enough, uh, the views started coming my way. And then from there, my channel actually grew exponentially. So that's one way you can do it.
Yes, trend hacking, anything that's timely. Fandoms is another big one. So I mentioned I'm a Star Wars fan. Do I have any Star Wars fans out here? Yeah. Okay, just, just a few. That was a little weak. I was kind of hoping maybe for the Republic we could get a little bit more hype for Star Wars. That's better. That's better. That's better. Thank you, thank you. Um, so uh, if you have a passion for certain fandoms and you want to create mocks from every single Marvel movie, I hear that does really well, right? SW. There might be somebody in this room that has actually done that the best out of anyone. So <laughs> fandoms is a big thing if you're passionate about Harry Potter or Marvel or Star Wars and you create a bunch of content around that, that's a really great way to build a community online and to help grow your channel. Yeah, you always have to balance what you want to make and what the audience wants to see because there's not always going to be 100% overlap. So like Doc Brick said, you don't want to just chase the views and what the viewers want um, because then you're going to burn out and quit. But you also, if you want to grow, can't 100% make what you want because sometimes people don't want to see that. If you're just doing it for fun, that's fine. But if you're trying to grow, you have to find that balance and look to the comments to see what the general consensus is, if people like this video, if you want to do a video similar to that. Uh, look elsewhere in the community, like people have said, um, to see what's working elsewhere. And just, yeah, like I said before, it takes a lot of trial and error to find that balance. And I'm, I'm still finding it myself. So for me, it's, especially if you're starting out early, you need to make stuff that you yourself would watch. I think a big mistake a lot of people make is they'll just ramble to a camera. And like you yourself, if the, the YouTube videos you watch are almost never like that, for the most part. Sometimes they are. Um, but I, I'd strongly suggest make stuff you yourself enjoy. And then there's probably also other people out there that would enjoy that. All right, cool. So now we have fan questions. So we had a big sign out there uh, uh, made by the V3 over here. He did a whole, I don't know where it is. It's over there. Um, so we have some really great questions I'm really excited to look at. So we're going to start with this. This is a fun one. Uh, and I'll start and we'll work it around. So, how has your social life changed since you became so YouTube famous? From Natalie, aka Lego Loca. Natalie here? <laughs> or Natalie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Natalie. All right, great. Cool. Every single conversation with someone new, if they ask, oh, what do you do? It's just, it's really awkward. And then I say YouTube, and they're like, oh, how do you make money? It's like, oh, how much money do you make? That's not an appropriate question. But, anyways. <laughs> Um, it's, it's just fun working through the awkwardness and it, it's, it's something to talk about with them. And so people are just curious and um, once I get to know them, then it's fine and just like a normal job to them. So uh, just working through that initial bump. <laughs> you asked me how my social life has changed. First thing I said was, what social life? Um, I think that we all have a great community here in the Lego space. So I'd say the biggest area of change has actually been getting getting to connect with all the people that you get to see online. And so obviously all these YouTubers are here. You probably watched a bunch of them online and then getting to actually put a face to these, these characters and personalities that you meet online is just really special. So the social aspect is really like here at these conventions, I think this is just the best part of it. Because yeah, sure, maybe somebody will recognize you out in public, but this is really where it's a lot of fun to get to interact with everybody and share your passion. Exactly. I think, yeah, in events like this, uh, show, uh, socially speaking, it's, it's quite different because, yeah, at least in Portugal, nobody knows who I am, which is great. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but then walking around in here, you get stopped every few minutes, and, and that's amazing, and that's fun because uh, that's the whole point of, uh, of coming here, I think. At least it, it's one of the, the, the things that made me want to come here and getting to meet all of you and getting to talk with all of you because it can get really lonely socially, you know, we are at our places making the videos and we get the comments which are great, but like <laughs> getting to meet the people in the flesh, that's a whole new level, so it, it's great. For me it's been really interesting because I was making YouTube videos for LEGO just kind of fairly recently, but I didn't feel like I was really part of the LEGO community until a friend of mine convinced me to come here last year actually and I actually got to start meeting people in person. And it's very, very interesting actually having friends who are into Lego. Most of my friends don't care about Lego at all, like 99% of them. So it's actually quite interesting to be able to actually talk to people in real life about Lego and about this side of my life. And it's something that 
before this, I feel like I never even talked about that much with my friends other than like, oh, the botanical set came out. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, but I mean, it's actually really cool because I feel like there are so many people, even just in this room, but in this convention, the best part is that everybody comes from their own diverse backgrounds. They have their own experiences to share. They come from all around the world, but everyone here is just guided by a passion for building and a passion for creativity. And I feel like that's what's really special about LEGO conventions. It's what's special about the LEGO community. And I feel like expanding that reach of people that you know that you can talk to about LEGO and about stuff like this has just been one of the most special things and communities I've been a part of. So I'm really thankful to be here. So I think I have a bit of a unique experience in that I, I go to public high schools. So that, that's, that's, that was quite a, a journey and there are lots of different things about that. Uh, I've noticed that the, the thinner and grayer people's hair get, the harder it is to explain to them what I do. <laughs> um, uh, but it's, uh, it's interesting. You say, it's kind of awkward to say, you know, especially as a high schooler. Uh, but then, you know, they look you up and it's like, oh, you have X hundred thousand subscribers. And it's like, oh, okay, legit. Um, so I guess that would be my response to that. Uh, the next one, I love this question. Who are your non-Lego inspirations or heroes? I need to think about it. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm just kidding. Uh, it's my dad and my mom. I mean, it's Father's Day and I don't get to be with my dad now uh, because, you know, I'm here, which really sucks. Um, but they, I see, saw how hard they worked to give me the opportunities they have, and I really appreciate them to the end of the earth. Um, yeah, okay, that's my answer. Shout out to all the dads in the audience again. All right, cool. I'm gonna say ditto to that. Um, my parents, my mom, and my dad, um, huge inspiration. They bought me my first Lego set when I was like five or whatever. Um, encouraging me all the way through. Another one I want to shout out, my brother Jordan. I wouldn't be where I am without him. Yes. Well, I can't stop the train now. Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I love Mr. Beast. Does anybody else know who that is? <laughs> I mean, it's kind of entertaining. And, you know, it's always fun to watch the, the big, big names on YouTube and such. So outside of Lego, I also watch Ryan Trahan. Anybody know who yes. that is? Yeah, oh. yeah. Uh, and, and Arak. I don't know if your kids watch yes. Arak. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, there's some good ones out there. Yeah. Uh, not so much as inspiration, but what drives me to do content is it's actually my kids. So, you know. Uh, sometimes it can can get hard on YouTube and the comment section sometimes isn't that nice But if you remember what you are doing things for then it's all good yeah. well, I'm gonna look like a massive jerk if I don't say my parents are family members now. So of course I gotta say my parents um, Honestly, I do feel like I have a lot to thank for them because they always had the mentality with me. They said, I could use as much space in the house as I wanted when I was a kid, but I had to spend my own money on Lego and figure out how to fund my own purchases. And I feel like that sort of forced me on this path of entrepreneurship and to kind of raise my own money to be able to fund my Lego collection, even from when I was in middle school and high school. So I'm really thankful to them for basically making me have the motivation within myself to keep doing what I'm doing. But, I mean, as I was saying before, there's so many inspirational people up here and in the audience and out there building mocks, doing their own things, doing their own types of videos that it's almost too many to list, but I just draw inspiration from everywhere and just try to get inspired by the people around me in the community. All right. All right so we're going to try to do, I guess, kind of speed round, um, but I think this is a really interesting question. So it's how long did it take you to get big on YouTube? Because it doesn't happen overnight. I started uploading like in 2018, uh, and I've been uploading since, and I didn't really, I didn't hit 100,000 until I was 16, so that was two years ago. Uh, so it, it takes a while. It's been a long, it takes a while. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I think I had my channel for four or five years maybe before I started my first minifig series 22ville. I was at 4,000 subscribers at the time and then by the time that was done we had just about hit 100k. And so um, it was slow, slow, slow until it was really fast and just all of a sudden it, it was crazy. Wow. Um, I think YouTube Shorts definitely boosted my channel, so that's why I suggested that earlier. Because it was about like a year and a half of creating just some 
some review videos and such, and then YouTube Shorts really, really took off, and so I think it's been about a year, year and a half or something since I hit 100,000, and we've just been growing ever since, so super appreciative to all you guys who watch my content out there. And if you don't, I'm gonna find you. <laughs> uh, for me, it took less than a year to get to 100, 100k from start to finish, which was which was cool. Uh, and in terms of monetization, like it was about like nine months. And when I started getting monetization, it it kind of was enough to support me. Well, my wife also works. She has health insurance for all the family. That helps, of course. Uh, so, but about nine months. And the cost of living in Portugal isn't the same as in the US. So maybe uh, what's enough for me isn't enough for Americans. So yeah, there's that. I don't know if I understand the question. Duckbricks has always been big, baby. Uh, <laughs> no, in all seriousness, I feel like Duckworks for me, like the YouTube channel, maybe I'm in a bit of a unique position because it's not my job, it's not even one of my main jobs, it's honestly just something I do for fun as a hobby, so I don't even know if I could tell you how many subscribers I have right now. What I do is I just pre-plan videos out for even years in advance and I just kind of let them go out. So I don't know if I could pinpoint an exact time where things really blew up. It must have been maybe about a year, year and a half, maybe two years in. Um, but I, I feel like there's maybe some videos that I put out that I didn't expect to do so well that eventually did. Um, like a nine hour Bionicle lore video was one of the, one of the great ones. But um, yeah, honestly, I would say if you're trying to figure out how to get big or how to get popular, just look at what videos perform well that you've put out and try to track it from there. I don't, but you should. <laughs> All right. I think we have time for one more of these and then we'll get into something cool, right? Okay, cool. All right. So. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm going to pick one. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. No. Uh, so, how, this is a fun one. How long does it usually take you to edit a video? <laughs> All the eye rolls. <laughs> Way too long. <laughs> Pushing like two weeks of just like editing <clears throat> most of the day. Ooh, I, wow. I do way too much. Every, every like second of the video wants something to be moving, which it's a fun final result. I know it's not for everyone, but it just takes so long to, to put it all together. Eventually, someday, I'll probably hire an editor to do that for me, or help at least with it. But for now, it's just, it's a burden. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I'd say like minimum one hour per minute of a video is like baseline. And that's with pretty minimal, like pretty minimal editing. So I'd say closer with sound effects, which I love to use, like three hours per minute. So. Eight minute video, you guys do the math. Okay, this is gonna sound in insane, uh, but... <laughs> Five minutes. <laughs> uh, not that, but if we are only talking about the edit of the video, usually it's like, two to three hours and I'm done. But that's because I have the system nailed down really well, because for my videos at least, I do the scripts, I use the scripts to do the audio recording, and the same script also serves as uh, my, uh, my plan for the video itself. So when I record the video, I record like the shots in succession. So I just basically, when I'm done with recording the video, I just need to drop that into the timeline and adjust the end point and the start point of the clips. So yeah, the edits are really fast. And there's not a whole lot of going in my videos. If you see, there's not like visual effects and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, but I do them quick because there's a lot of preparation preparation beforehand. How long does your video plan take? Oh yeah, the question. So yeah, from start to finish, let's say a video usually takes me like a week because there's the build, there's the script, audio recording, cutting, and then shooting, and then uploading, and all of that. So yeah, I would say like about a week to get a review from start to finish then. If I'm really stressed with an embargo date, I can do it in like <coughs> two to three days, depending on set size. That is honestly inspirational. Tiago is really built <laughs> different. I guess we knew that already, but that's very, very cool. My honest answer is I genuinely do not know how long it takes me because I feel like my videos really vary in length. Like some of them are nine hours and some of them are like eight minutes. So I really, it's hard to tell. What I will say is that I have a pretty solid production pipeline for videos, which also prevents me from understanding how long things take. Because the way that I do things is 
I have a spreadsheet of every video, because I put out a video every day, so I have a spreadsheet of what exactly I'm gonna do for the next year. Um, and I'll just spend the day just filming the intro and outro for maybe 30 videos, and I just spend one full day doing that, um, just going up and down, up and down my stairs over and over again. <laughs> um, but then, that means, I mean, no, really, it's just like, I get, it's my workout, you know, it's a workout for the day, never skip leg day. Um, but uh, what happens is then, I can just be in between work meetings, or I can be traveling, I might be at like an airport lounge and ask for a quiet room, and as long as I only need to be on camera for the intro outro, I can record the audio for the video literally anywhere I am, which means that I am always in some state of working on a video. Like, I, frankly, I should be editing right now, but uh, I, that also means I have no idea how long it takes me. <laughs> Sorry. I don't have a good answer for this one. I have the best editor in the world. James, over here, so please clap. No. <laughs> Thank you, James. All right, so. I'd say that was pretty informative. Did everyone learn something first off? Yeah. Good, okay, cool. So, we, 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 here's the gimmick. I wanna get, we have a lot of people in the audience that I couldn't get on the panel today. Uh, so many people, oh my gosh. We have MKM with the biggest, like every Minecraft video. We have SW, uh, we did every Marvel, Firebird. We have, I, I don't know, Brickley, who did the largest clone army like in the world. We have Krista, oh my, so many people. I see you, Sans. I know you're getting around. You're moving up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think I saw Ryan back there somewhere. I don't know. But it's very exciting. So I'd like... Oh, and we, I'm a source, of course. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm leaving like millions of people out. Yes. Absolutely. So I'd like... And, I'd like to call them all up here. I'd like to get a big group photo uh, for the biggest LEGO panel ever. We got everyone. 